Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to everyone and welcome to my presentation. Let me introduce myself. I'm Rushila Binti Bujang and an audiologist from Hospital Kuala Lumpur. So as you can see on the screen, our topic for this session is about caloric testing. So let me first give you a brief overview about the anatomy of the inner ear. As we can see here, the inner ear divided into two main parts. It is the cochlea, which is the hearing portion, and semicircular canal and otolith organ is the balance portion. The semicircular canal are also known as the labyrinthine, and these canals are lined up at right angle 90 degrees to each other, and the otolith organ has two parts. Uh, it is a utricle and secure. So, in this session, I will explain regarding the caloric testing, which is one of the tests that we use, objective tests that we use to monitor the lateral canal functions. Other than that, we also have another test to monitor lateral canal, semicircular canal function, which is known as a rotating chair. So, um, I will explain on the, this test on the next session. So let me first give you a brief overview on the introduction of the caloric testing. This thermal caloric irrigation test was first described by Robert Barani in 1906. Barani observed that when water cooler than body temperature was infused into the ear canal of patients uh, which is sitting upright, nystagmus was elicited with a fast face directed towards the opposite ear. Alternatively, when the water warmer than body temperature was infused into the ear canal, the nystagmus uh, was elicited with a fast face directed towards the same side. So, caloric testing is based on the principle of a generating thermal variation within the external auditory canal, producing convection currents that then stimulate the sensorial, sensorial cells located in the ampullary. So the advantages of the thermal caloric test is the ability to isolate one peripheral vestibular apparatus for evolution at one time. Since uh, many years, um, this caloric test has been used for the assessment of the VOR function of the horizontal semicircular canal by using a non-physiological stimulus in frequency ranging from 0.002 to 0.004 Hz or low frequency movement. It is also known as a gold standard test uh, which has been using for diagnosing unilateral vestibular loss. It also does not assess the function of the seculus or the utricle of the vertical canals. So it's only used to assess the lateral semicircular canals in with the rotating chair test. In this test, um, caloric stimulation may be done with water or air. So this uh, stimulus will generate an endolymphatic current within the stimulated lateral canal and analogous to 0.003 Hz angular movement or low frequency movement. The ear uh, is water irrigated for 40 seconds at temperature of 44 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius or 7 degrees Celsius over and 7 degree Celsius below the body temperature, then it will generate the endolymphatic currents. But um, that is for water. But for air stimulation, uh, we will use 8 liter per minute air current at uh, 50 degree Celsius and 24 degree Celsius, about 13 degree Celsius above and 13 uh, degree Celsius below body temperature which uh, will apply for 60 seconds longer than the water, then it will generate the current similar to the generated by the water at the 44 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. Let's now take a look at this diagram, which shows how thermal convection current set up in the membranous labyrinth. 
an upward change in the middle ear temperature above the bodily temperature will cause the endolim to move upwards, uh, generating an endolymphatic current within the canal towards the ampulla. Then if the stimulus temperature is lower than bodily temperature, there is the opposite movement which uh, generates an ampullary current towards the canal or away from the ampulla. So this action uh, of this convection currents on the ampullary crest alters the action potential of these sensory receptors and inhibiting this current. So stimulation initiates the vestibular ocular reflex and a simple reflex up from the vestibular nucleus to the oculomotor nuclei, which uh, it generates the vestibular nystagmus. As I have already explained on the previous slide, uh, the caloric stimulation in, will initiate the VOR or vestibular ocular reflex, which uh, generate vestibular nystagmus. So in this slide, uh, it shows the uh, in this slide shows the recorded nystagmus during the stimulation. There are four sets of nystagmus shown here. The cool irrigation will result in slow phase movement towards the ear stimulated and the fast phase eye movements away from the stimulated ear. Uh, alternately, for warm water or air irrigation will result in slow phase eye movements away from the ear stimulated and fast phase towards the stimulated ear or the nomenics known as cows. Cold opposite, warm seams. The first phase will represent the direction of the nystagmus meeting. So as we can see here at the top of this graph, the nystagmus uh, showed origin from the right warm irrigation. So the first phase is uh, directed to the right, to the stimulated ear, uh, which uh, the nominic for warm seams. And the second graph shows nystagmus from right ear cold irrigation uh, initiates a fast phase to the left. In this test, uh, basic assumption um, that uh, right and left ear receive equal stimulation must take into account. So we must try to make sure that the stimulus presented has equal temperature volume and duration by using the irrigator so we can set all the parameters on the irrigator and we must pay attention on the patient alertness during the test and also uh, we must perform the otoscopy examination to see any affected wax before we proceed with the test that is that way we can control before we do the test now let's look at the photo shows here is our uh, irrigator unit. We have two irrigator. The one is on the trolley is water irrigator and the below is one is the air irrigator. So the difference between air and water irrigator is its nozzle part which we use to present the air or water inside the ear canal. Water irrigator has a longer and smaller nozzle as compared with the air irrigator. So uh, we can put on the tube tips on the adapter to prevent uh, injury to the eardrum which uh, this tip can be sterile to against the contamination. Okay, um, let's now we move on how we perform the test. So. Uh, first, we must perform the otoscopy examination and tympanometry to check uh, the condition of the ear canal and tympanic membrane uh, before we start the test. And uh, we must make the patient as comfortable and least relaxed as possible. Then we give uh, instruction to the patient. Uh, we must explain to the patient that the test will involve uh, warming and cooling the external ear canal and that this may or may not result in dizziness um, which lasting about about one to two minutes. We also uh, must explain to the patient that any dizziness is experienced is a normal reaction and that
that the test is not intended to provoke an episode of uh, their own dizziness. Then we must obtain uh, verbal consent uh, to proceed with the test. Then uh, place the goggles uh, which containing the video cameras on the pa patient's face and adjust the position of the goggles uh, and the camera to achieve a clear view of the pupils of the eyes even if the patient looks to the extreme of gaze. Um, before we start with the test, uh, calibration of the eye movements uh, should be performed in a dimly lit uh, room and before the first irrigation so it is generally unnecessary to carry out further calibration unless the cameras are moved within the goggles or if the goggles are removed or re repositioned so uh, we can follow the procedure recommend recommended by the manufacturer for the positioning so the optimal condition for recording uh, calorie induced statements is in the absence of visual fixation with, with the eyes open in complete darkness with the patient instructed to gaze straight ahead. So before we start with the irrigation, we switch off the lights. Okay, now let's move to the next slide. So uh, before we proceed with the irrigation, so the, this test ordinarily performed with the subject reclining, which head inclined about 30 degree up from horizontal so as to make the lateral canal in the horizontal positions. So uh, this position will bring the semicircular canal, lateral semicircular canal, uh, the cupola into a near vertical position where the force of the convection current can deflect it optimally. So um, this position also the best tolerated and more comfortable for the patient to be in for a long duration of this test about 30 minutes. So next step is the irrigation process. For water irrigation, as we can see on the left hand side, a plastic uh, kidney tray is placed under the patient's ear. We also can place the towel beneath the kidney tray so that the kidney tray is placed directly beneath the auricles and this can leave hands of the examiner free to open the ear canal and then insert the irrigation tape properly. Then water or uh, air is introduced into the ear canal on one side, uh, either for warm or cold. It will stop after 30 seconds for water and 60 seconds for air. Then the nystagmus is observed. While the subject is distracted, usually we use the mental tasking such as uh, naming of animals or counting backwards. Um, this to help overcome the central separation of nystagmus happen and uh, to help to identify peripheral type of nystagmus. Usually, nystagmus commonly builds up about 30 to 60 seconds, then it will gradually decay away over roughly 2 minutes. After a rest of at least 5 minutes, the procedure is repeated with either the opposite temperature for water or air or on the other side. And then soon after the response has passed through the period of maximum activity, we will instruct the patient to fixate on the central target or uh, red light inside the goggles. So after approximately 5 to 10 seconds, uh, we will remove the fixation or the red lights again and we will continue the recording for at least a further 5 seconds. So the total time following uh, session of the irrigation should be at least 60 seconds. As we can see here is an example of calorie testing screen in our software during the irrigation for right cool air so we can hear the we can see the nystagmus is beating to the left for right 
cool air irrigation. So after all four irrigation is completed, we can examine and edit the trace where necessary. There are pro and cons for using air or water irrigation. For air, it is less messy for the patient and examiner, but it shows a weak response. But Air is useful for patients with uh, perforated eardrums, so no need to use that water uh, for the, uh, the patient with has a perforated eardrum. But for water, it's easier to get an effective irrigation, but it's messier for the patients and the examiner, and, but, yeah, but it also shows a stronger response as compared with the air irrigation. So before we run the test, we need to comply with the contraindication uh, for the test. As I show here is a list of uh, contraindication for caloric tests from the BSA. We need to make sure the patient has no history of hypertension, history of cardiac problems, psychotic or neurotic disorder, epilepsy, eye surgery within the previous three months and ear surgery for previous six months. We also need to need to make sure that the patient has no impacted wax, otitis externa, middle ear fluid or effusion and hypermobile or atrophy of the tympanic membranes. Now let me go to how we analyze the response. As we can see here, the amplitude of the slow phase movement or the magnitude measured in degree from the base of the nystagmus to its peaks. Then the nystagmus velocity measured as amplitude over time in seconds. So the caloric response of measured based on the average SPV of 10 consecutive nystagmus beats at the peak of caloric uh, response. The next step after we have the results, usually every caloric system uh, automatically analyzes the response. So the data we presented and interpret by comparative analysis and calculated as cannabis or unilateral uh, weaknesses and also the directional preponderance. But we also need to evaluate the absolute values, whether those values are above or below a normal range. Because these absolute values, um, uh, we, will, we will define whether it's a hyperflexia or a nystagmographic response higher than expected. And we define as a hyperreflexia. Uh, as response lower than expected and reflexia as the absence of the caloric response. So these ab absolute SPV values will affect the um, cannabis or unilateral weaknesses calculation and directional preponderance values. So um, we must see the absolute values uh, before we go to the next step uh, to analyze uh, the asymmetries. So let's look on how we calculate the cannabis and directional preponderance to determine the level of function of one peripheral vestibular system um, differs in statistically significant by using the Jonkis formula uh, for cannabis and the directional preponderance. So this formula measures the asymmetrical ratio between left and right calorie response. So LC refers to average SPV of the left cool irrigations. LW refers to average SPV of left warm uh, irrigations. RC for right cool, um, right cool irrigation, and RW for right warm irrigations. So the accepted value for cannabis is uh, more than 25 as, signif as significant weakness for horizontal canal function for the left and right. So it is recommended that individual laboratories collect their own data on uh, what constitutes the normal range of caloric response. 
So the kernel parisis or unilateral weakness value or interaural difference in mean maximum SPV of greater than 25% um, denotes a peripheral vestibular uh, region involving the lateral horizontal or semicircular canal or its efferent pathway on the side of the weaker response. So it involves a pathway extend from the end organ to the uh, root entry zone of the vestibular nerve in the brain stem. So the com the most common causes of uh, unilateral vestibular dysfunctions are eight nerve tumors um, such as the vestibular sessionoma and uh, acoustic neuroma, vestibular neuritis, uh, labyrinthitis and meniere's disease. So um, Unilateral dysfunction also may occur in the migraine cases and in the cerebrovascular disease. So now we go to the uh, directional preponderance measurement. So this is a measurement when the nystagmus response is greater in one direction than in the other directions, uh, left beating and right beating. So normally DP value is different as 27% or greater difference in intensity of the max uh, SPV between the two right beating response, right warm and left cool, and the two left uh, beating uh, for left uh, warm irrigation and right cool irrigation response. So, uh, but this value is, has a poor lo localizing value, so it is usually associated with spontaneous nystagmus. So, because the DP may also indicate a tonic bias in the vestibular system, which could be caused by the peripheral or central origin. Now we take a look on the absolute value or total SPV value for all uh, four irrigations. So it will, uh, it can be classified as a hyperreflexia, hyperreflexia, and aerreflexia. So for hyperreflexia refers to a caloric induced misstatement which exceeds the upper limits of laboratory normative data. So um, it's uh, value over the 40 degrees per second to 80 degrees per second. Hyperreflexia may be associated with the central or peripheral vestibular disease. In uh, peripheral vestibular disease, hyperreflexia may be seen in the contralateral labyrinths to that with a deficient uh, response. So uh, for bilateral hyperreflexia may be observed in central vestibular which involving cerebral region uh, maybe due to injury or multiple sclerosis. Um, it also can be because of the non-organic sources uh, due to enhancement of caloric transfers in cases of the postmastectomy, perforation of TM and retracted TM. Or it also can be due to excessive nervousness of the patient because of the anxiety. So we must um, interpret the response um, carefully. Um, we also uh, examine the morphology of the response. Then now we look on the opposite, opposite of the hyperreflexia. It is defined as a bilateral vestibular function uh, deficit when the nystagmus uh, respond under um, 12 degree per second uh, open bilateral warm irrigation uh, and 6 degree per second for bilateral cool stimulation or total for SPV as is less than uh, 30 degree per second. Um, the cause of the persistent hyperreflexia may be associated with the autotoxicity, systemic infection such as the congenital or acquired syphilis and uh, because of due to central nervous system disease. Um, some uh, researchers also define as uh, bilateral weaknesses when the response from both right and left ear is less than 12 degrees per second. So, or total right ear uh, um, irrigation for 12 degrees per second and total left ear for both uh, warm and cold irrigation uh, 12 degrees per second. So we have here a picture with the caloric results which shows a very weak response or low SPV. This is good, uh, for warm, um, bright irrigations. 
Vocabulary response the data will display in several types of graph. So as for example here, in the circle shows the graph of SPV per second. Um, horizontal axis is for time in second and the vertical axis for SPV in degree per second. So it will display for both years, uh, left and right, blue for left and red for right year. So we can see uh, directly whether the response is more stronger or weak in uh, one year than another. Calorie uh, response also presented as a butterfly chart or Clausen chart. So it presented in four quadrants uh, showing res calorie response in each year. So horizontal axis represent uh, four times in seconds and vertical axis represent number of misstatements bit. So the gray area here or here a green represent a normal range of for the maximum SPV for each year and temperature. So the normal response should be in this uh, region. I'm now approaching or uh, nearing the end of my presentation. As final point, I would like to highlight on some studies uh, related with caloric tests in diagnosing vestibular disorders. So as we can see here, studies by Renga in 2019 shows that bitumen caloric test is often used to test the horizontal canal functions. So it's reconfirmed uh, with the earlier studies done by many researchers. Then, uh, recent studies uh, also found that uh, calorie abnormalities in natural or bilateral weakness usually reflects uh, to the peripheral lesions. Study by Perepa 2017 and Lee et al. 2020. And most common ear disease that cause the unilateral weaknesses uh, in the calorie testing is a menius disease. And study by B et al. 2019 also concluded that uh, calorie tests uh, may be a best tool for predicting the treatment outcomes uh, or recurrence in uh, BPPV uh, patients. But uh, studies also show that we must uh, take into account uh, the high inter and intra subject variation in the calorie uh, testing to prevent the unnecessary false positive or false negative uh, diagnosis. Okay, that's all from me. Uh, thank you for your listening.